It is snowing here in the kingdom of Bungie and my wife is out shoveling the walkway. I have to go out and help shovel here pretty quick. But before that, I'm gonna make a video, right? My last video, we talked about the 10.515 and a 440 that they put out, some ultra modern speeds, aren't they? And some new technology, pretty exciting stuff. This video, we're gonna start focusing this year in 2024 on some of the new offerings from companies that aren't as expensive, some budget-minded models. Right now, these aren't exactly budget-minded. We're finishing up the new offerings from 10 point in this video, depending on what budget means to you. These are in the $1,000 range, okay? They aren't the $3,500 or $2,500 range like we looked at in that last video. So this is a little different, a little different, but we're coming down in price as we will see. We're gonna start off by looking at the 10 point Siege 425. I bet this shoots about 425 feet per second. Hmm. I catch on pretty quick, don't I? <laughs> you know, it's funny when I started with crossbows back in 2010, when I bought the original bungee hanging on the wall behind me, back then they didn't really talk in terms of speed. They advertised the draw weight. Can you believe that? They would sell you a 200. Right, that was a big deal, you got a 200, ooh, you know. Now we talk about them in terms of the speed, which makes a lot more sense, I guess, because it's a number that allows us to compare one crossbow against another, right? You gotta look into those numbers. You gotta look into those numbers. 425 with this crossbow might not be 425 with another crossbow. We'll see what kind of arrow weight they use to get this speed, that matters, doesn't it? And it also matters how they attain the 425 feet per second. Let's look at this crossbow. Pretty sweet looking machine here. We are at 425 feet per second. It is 12 inches wide or seven and a half inches wide. Uncocked, it's 12 inches wide, but keep in mind that doesn't go to the outside of the cams. That's probably axle to axle. So let's actually use a realistic number, an estimate, a guesstimate, if you will. It's around 15 inches wide total. That's the number that matters to me to me as a crossbow hunter, sitting in a blind, 15 inches is the maximum width I'm gonna be dealing with, right? I realize that seven and a half inch axle to axle is smaller, maybe nine, 10 inches wide when it's cocked to the outside of those cams. But when it expands, that's what's gonna hit the side of the blind, hit the tree next to you, all that good stuff. That's the figure that is very important if you ask me. The length, 26 and a half inches long. That's pretty short. Right, that's not a very long crossbow. So this is a stocky little fella. Look at him here, he's got the crank on here. One thing you will find on these, even on the less expensive models from 10 point, now I realize we're still at the $2,000 range, but by 10 point standards, that's like kind of the middle of the range, isn't it? But this crossbow, 425 feet per second, we're coming down in price from last time, but we do have that really high-end crank system. 10 point, the cranks I've used, I'm not a big guy with cranks. Probably in my entire crossbow lifetime, I have cranked a crossbow about three or four times. <laughs> I've used an Excalibur crank, a Killer Instinct crank, and I've used this 10 point crank. And I gotta tell you, these are, they're pretty slick. Pretty slick, really do like them. If you look at these, what we've got here, we also see, ooh, the limbs are on backwards. Did somebody tell them? Look at this, the cams are out front. Somebody put this thing together wrong, didn't they? No, <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, the limbs, this is a reverse draw, reverse limb crossbow. Very similar to the Scorp and very similar to that 515 we saw the other day on the other video. The nice thing about that is you've got that reverse draw. You have a longer draw length, right? Power stroke. The string's coming back farther, allows it to impart more energy on the arrow, and it allows them to make this a more compact crossbow. If you're looking for something more compact to maneuver in a blind, this is a good choice. So that reverse draw, reverse limb, you can get into that reverse draw, reverse limb club for about 2,000 bucks here. What else we see here? Scope struts. Do you see this? Scope struts on here. Now, if we look at it, right here's what we're talking about with those scope struts. You really can't see them in this picture. This little erector set design here, it looks like a piece of an erector set. That comes up through here and that is the scope strut. The purpose of that is to tie the Picatinny rail, right? The scope mount into the stock of the crossbow so it's got added strength for all that vibration. When you fire these, a lot of energy, a lot of vibration, and it's wiggling those things. And so you don't have problems with more modern scopes, the big heavy scopes, the low light gathering scopes that we like, or the range finding scopes that we like. On here, we have this, uh, the rail extends out. We have a, a stirrup on the end, but it's not a stirrup, no. It's not, it's a bow hanger. <laughs> they really don't like to call them stirrups anymore. And I think the reason for that is they uh, are not 
rope cockable. So they don't want you putting your foot in there. They refer to the stirrup as a bow hanger. I like to have something to put my toe in if you're gonna crank it. It seems like it's gonna wander all over the place if you don't have that, so that's pretty nice. You can put your foot in the end of this thing to sort of stabilize it as you're cranking it. The Ravens don't have that, and I always found it to be a little bit of a problem. I'm sitting here and it's wandering all over the place when I was trying to crank it. It wants to twist and everything. I have cocked a Raven also with a crank, so I, I just don't like cranks. So I, I, don't, I don't spend a lot of time doing that. That really is my point. But if you use them all the time, you get good at it, you probably don't have that problem, right? You probably don't have that problem if you are a Raven user because it's that one gun philosophy. I've talked about that in my books. One gun. If you use that gun over and over and over, or in this case a crossbow, you're going to get really good with that piece of equipment. So whatever crossbow you get, whether it's this one or something else, just keep using it, right? Keep using it, get really good with it. When you have such small limbs like this, you really don't get the bang for your buck for camo, right? Like there's just not enough surface area to really enjoy that camo. If you're sitting up in a tree stand, you're holding most of this stuff. You're covering most of it up. So what's the point in having camo? But it is the way it is. We buy camo, we like camo. Green, this green isn't a bad color either. I do like it. Some people might say that's a little drab. It is a little drab. So maybe you have to get the camo, I don't know. Here's the design. I look down at that reverse limb design. And one other thing that I can point out about 10 point in general, you notice they always have four cables. One, two, three, four. I think there's four cables on their crossbows. They got two sets of limbs and four cables. That's a weird thing to me. That's a lot of cables to keep in time. I'm just intimidated by that. Spent over a decade hunting with a recurve crossbow, stepped up to a scorpid, right? And I can change the strings and cables on the scorpid, no problem. I can do it as easily or even more easily than the recurve, to be honest with you. It's not that hard. And getting it in time, that sometimes you got to tweak that, that sort of thing. But really, I haven't any trouble with that. I want you to get your head around it and understand what you're trying to accomplish. So the next step for me is to get a press and start playing around with compound crossbows, putting them in a press and adjusting the timing and stuff like that. That's my next step because I feel like that's the next step for me in my progression, my journey as a crossbow hunter, right? Start out with something real simple, let somebody else do the extra work, blah, blah, blah. But then you get to the point where you want to do it yourself. This is, looks like it's like the master class, right? It's an expert level adjustment. So I don't think I would be putting one of these in a press myself and trying to change the strings and cables, but that isn't to say that five years from now, we're not having a discussion where I'm doing a video and showing you how to do it. I don't know, might get to that point, who knows? But that's definitely not where I'm at right now. Scope wise, they come with the speed ring scope. Now their scopes aren't bad. People do like those scopes, but man, that's a lot of reticles. They're awful close together. That's an awful lot of them for my old eyes, a little too close together, a little too much action in there. That's one of the reasons I like a range finding scope because I don't have to deal with the reticles being close together and figuring out things. There's a red dot, that's where I aim, that's it. Boom, done. Let's go on to the next offering from 10 Point this year, the Titan 400. This one probably has a 400 pound draw weight. <laughs> no, it's 400 feet per second. And these are 10 points. They're usually getting their speeds out of a 410 grain arrow from what I've seen. So we are at least getting somewhat realistic speeds from these. If they tell you it's a 400 feet per second, you go and start hunting with it. You can be in that feet per second range with your hunting arrow. Some of the manufacturers are drawing these down to 390, 370, maybe even 350 grain arrows, those are light, okay? They're getting speeds with what I consider an artificially light weight, something I wouldn't hunt with. So to me, it's important to have a realistic number here. And I think 10 point, and I congratulate them and thank them for putting together some realistic numbers. This crossbow also in realistic numbers, it's 899. I can tell you, we're all of a sudden in my price range, right? I would consider buying a crossbow at this price range. I got a job, I work hard, I have money, but I don't like to spend my money just on crossbows. I love crossbows, I really do, but I'm not gonna buy a lot of crossbows and I'm not gonna buy really expensive crossbows. They're fun to look at, I love the technology. As we will see in our next video, that technology trickles down, it reaches us. Guys like me who are a little stingy don't wanna spend this kind of money, right? But now we're getting into kind of where I would spend on a crossbow like this, money that I would spend on this. And look what we get. We do get the AccuDraw silent crank system. This is a quality 
crank okay so we do have something that's really good lightweight six pounds and compact profile this one is not real wide on the front end it does not have that reverse draw now that's extra money right getting that reverse draw reverse limb design but we have a more traditional design this is an even reverse draw this is a traditional design crossbow the limbs on the front pulling off the back of the cams toward you that is a traditional design we don't have scope struts on this one but we're also at the 400 feet per second range where maybe there isn't that much energy being released where it damages the scope and the picatinny rail and all that good stuff not as wide you notice that we're losing a little bit of width compared to other crossbows in this price class okay but we are a little bit longer than the last offering that we saw we're 33 inches long overall that's that's a lengthy crossbow but i can tell you as a guy that's hunted with a crossbow that's about three inches longer than that it hasn't been much of a problem you can get the job done you can get the job done this one does not have a stirrup it's a bow hook they go straight to calling it a bow hook and as we'll see in the pictures it's a very small little thing that you can hang a uh, off the tree stand that's that sort of thing hang up in your blind or whatever you do you can see here our little bow hook the bow hanger right to hang it up very nice very nice like that and here's a look down at the crossbow you can see the design here when these are at rest and they never show us pictures of these crossbows uncocked i almost think that should be mandatory you should be able to tell me how fast does this crossbow shoot with a 400 grain arrow period right that's all i want to know how fast is it in reality with a 400 grain arrow? And the other thing they should do is show you an uncocked picture of the crossbow. And they never do. Nobody does that really. But the uncocked width is the most important one. And I don't really care about axle to axle. I care about the outside of the cams, right? How wide is this thing? How wide does it really get in reality? Here, though, at rest, these strings would come off the back of these cams here. They don't come off the front of the cams. That's your traditional design. That's pretty cool, though. You get 400 feet per second. This is a modern crossbow shooting, modern speeds. Really a modern, realistic price of $899 for a company that, you know, unfortunately doesn't offer even a... They offer a five-year warranty on most of the stuff that matters. So they're not necessarily the best warranty in the business, but you're buying a crossbow that has 30 years of a reputation build up of building pretty good stuff most people like them occasionally i get notices from people who didn't have a good experience with 10 point i understand that it's regrettable it's too bad i don't like hearing that but the reality is most people fortunately do have a decent experience with that company and that's why they're able to still be in business after 30 years that's why they're able to sell these crossbows at these prices look at this scope however do you see the problem with this, this is a 70 yard scope, 70 yard reticles going up to 70 yards, but man, they are crammed right in tight. You got all this glass to put the scope, you know, and it's only right here. It's only right here. And that's got a lot to do with the speed of the crossbow, I'm sure, doesn't it? Because that the distance between those reticles is tied into the speed of the crossbow, of course. The problem with this is, man, it's you don't really gain any advantage, right? Really no difference in this scope other than they just didn't put the other reticles on there. Look at that scope. We'll go back to the Siege 425 and look at this scope it's the same scope they just didn't put the stuff at the bottom right well you didn't pay us enough to put the stuff at the bottom <laughs> that's what they're saying it's also a 400 feet per second crossbow maybe they're thinking you shouldn't be shooting longer distances with that but people like to reach out in the backyard i do believe that as we go forward you're going to see more and more range finding scopes i think that well that those are a fixture that's going to be something we use long term in the crossbow world it's possible that these really really fast crossbows kind of do away with that we'll see but i do like the fact that i have on any crossbow i can dial that burris oracle x in perfect the last of the crossbows from 10 point that we are going to look at probably for the year we are down to one thousand dollars okay up to one thousand dollars the 400 Cost is $899. We're looking at the Venom X, which shoots $390. It's a little slower, but it shoots, it costs a little bit more. Okay, costs a little bit more, but it's a little slower. What's up with that? What is the deal with that? One thing that we have, if you look, it has a different crank than our other offering from 10 Point does. This one has the AccuDraw Silent crank. This one has the AccuSlide cocking and decocking system. Ooh, Accu whatever. Right, you get an Accu something on a 10 point, that's a good crank. But this has the Accu slide, the cocking and decocking system. It is a higher end model. It also comes with the scope struts that we discussed. So you can put that heavier scope on there and not worry about it. However, it comes with that same 70 yard reduced price scope. One thing about 
all crossbows. The scope is really the soul of the crossbow, in my opinion, right? That's I kind of look at that like the soul of the crossbow. Because when I pick it up, that's what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at the crossbow. Ooh, this is nice. No, I'm looking through the scope, and that's the first thing that I see. So scopes to me are very important. That's why I like to have the same scope on every crossbow that I use. I don't like to use crossbows without the same scope because I have to relearn stuff. You get a Raven, all of a sudden you got a 20 and 30 yard reticle above the 40 or whatever. That's a different geometry. That's a different way of looking through the crossbow scope than what I'm traditionally used to, which is looking at them through uh, the eyes of a 60 yard reticle on an old Excalibur scope, for example, if you're using those speed ring scopes. So I really do like to have that. Now in this day and age, those range finding scopes cost a million dollars, right? They're pretty expensive. But having one on each crossbow to me is very important. I do find that to be very important. The length of this one, 32 and a half inches. Again, the width, this is a more traditional style of crossbow. We can even look at the top down on it. And if you look at the top down, this is the same design. This is the, um, the traditional design, limbs coming off the front, the riser up front, and the string coming off the back of the cams. So that's a, the, the look down. We also have a bow hanger on the front. And when you lose a stirrup, what do you lose also? You lose protection for your broadhead. This is shown with one of the 10 point broadheads, I believe. But if you put a swahacker on there, right? A big old three incher that sticks out that far, you're adding to what's gonna stick out past the end of the crossbow. And that is problematic in my opinion. I like to have that protected. My crossbows, I can set them face down, right? Front end down in the blind and lift them up and shoot when I'm ready. I can walk through the woods, whatever, and I know that my broadhead is partially secure, right? Partially protected by that stirrup. That stirrup is helpful for that, right? On each of the crossbows that I have, the broadhead is tucked back in here, back in this area, right? Or the stirrup comes out and protects it if it's out here. So that's something that I look for. It may not be important to you. May not. That may not be important to you. Everybody has different wants and needs and desires when it comes to crossbows, and that's why they make different kinds. Now, I have to go out and do a little shoveling of snow. That is what's next on the agenda for me. But I want to tell you, these are ranging from 900 bucks right and up, the 10-point offerings. Next video, we're going to look at what you can buy right now from, you ready? Here it goes. Boom. From Walmart. We are going to look at Walmart offerings and look at some of these crossbows. That's going to be a fun one. But look at this. For 169 bucks, for 200 bucks, for 220, you can buy some pretty cool technology in this day and age, and that's one of the things that we want to talk about in 2024, isn't it? Saving some money, right? Inflation, prices going up. These are pretty good crossbows, and we're going to take a look at those in our next video. Until next time, all hail Bungie. Bungie.